okay so which problem is still pending let's see okay so first problem which is pending is is palindrome let's try to do this problem so the is palindrome is something it it is a string which is same if you start from the beginning or if you start from the end so the a b c okay a b c c b a i will check the solution if you have sent me uh, but uh, i'll show you now my solution so if i start from a b c to from the beginning or from the end it is same the string is same so you can do this problem by for loop but now we, since we are in the recursion we should do this problem using the recursion okay so let's go here and we will write our logic so there is a base case which i will add it later so that we can stop the palindrome but let's do the logic part here so i will check the string 0 string 0 is this a part so i will check if a string of 0 is equal to equal to so a string of 0 should be equal to a string of this last element so a string of 0 should be equal to a string dot slice of minus 1 if i say minus 1 then it will take the last one character of the string so for example let's see in the Let's see this in this one. In the console. So if I have a string hello and I put dot slice one, slice minus one, it will take the last character. So if we want to take the last character of the string, we always say slice of minus one. So if the string of zero is equal to a string of the last character, that means these are the same that means then we have to go in another one inside one okay so first we are testing the outer one the string of a should be equal to string of the last element and if it is there then we have to check the internal one so if they are equal i will call this is palindrome again i will say return is palindrome and in the is palindrome i have to pass from b to b because a is already matching so we have to pass the internal string here so to pass the internal string i will say string dot slice it will start it should start from the one and it should end minus one so that means it will start with the b and since it is minus one so it will end with this b so it will cut a from the uh, from this string so if you want to see this string i will just control the string string is string so when i will send this first it will check if a is equal to a then return we call is palindrome again with the b c c b this part and then again it will check b with this b and if both are same then it will send cc inside this is palindrome and if both are same that means it is a palindrome right mm -hmm. so if these two are not matching if this zero is not matching with the slice one that is if this is not matching with this then we have to return false so the last case is will be return false because if it is matching then we will return already this function palindrome but if they are not matching then we will return false now we have to take some base case where we will end the logic of the function and the base case will be like this if string dot length is equal to equal to one so if it is one for example i am adding one d here so when everything is matched last become d so the string length will be one so since it is one d should match with one so when string dot length is one we have to return true because consider d 
when all these three are matched with all these three, we will pass D, and D is string length 1, so D should match with 1, so it will return true. Next, next case is, if string dot length is equal to equal to 2, so if it is 2, like for example, I am passing AA, so if I am passing AA, only two characters, then it should return if both are same. So it should return a string of 0 is equal to equal to a string of 1. So 0 is A and 1 is A. So if we are passing only two characters, both should be same. Then only we have to return true, otherwise we have to return false. For example, if I am passing A, B, then both are not same, so it is not palindrome. So if both are not same, then we will send false. But if both, there are only two characters, then if both are same, then we return true. And if the string length is more than two, then, then we check the first character with the last character, and if it is same, then we again call the is palindrome by sending the internal string and then again internal string, and then again internal string. So for example, in this case, string is not equal to string 1, that is A is not equal to E. So that means this condition will not work, and then we'll return the false. So it will return false in this case. Okay, let's run and see if we are getting correct results. So, String is A, B, C, C, A, then we are sending B, C, C, B, then we are sending C, C. The ultimate is true. So this is the palindrome. If you your solution is not like my case, then you can write down this solution. You have two minutes to write down this one.
okay let's go to next problem this is 10 number this is 11 number so this is the sum where we we pass the array like 1 2 3 4 and we pass the function and if the value of the function is true for any one of them so if I pass 1 in this is odd or 2 or 3 or 4 if any one of the value is true then we have to return true and if all the values are false if I pass 2 and 4 in this function then both the values are false then it should return false okay so that is the thing which we have to do it so let's try to write down this one here okay so I will write down the base case in a minute so before writing the base case so first I will check if if I will call this callback with only the first value that is the one so I will call the callback function that is is odd function with only this first value so to get this first value what we do always in in our case we will say array of zero so whatever array is passed I will check this first value array of zero and if this is true that means any one of them is true because if one is true that means we are okay because we want any one should be true so if we are getting this callback true then we will immediately return true we don't need to go further so this is our logic if callback of the first element is true then we return true so because we want only the one element to be true okay so and if if in this case first element is not true so this will become false and we are not inside the if condition so we need to call this recursive again with the second element because we have to check all the elements of the array and we have to check if any one of them is true or not so I will return same this function some recursive but here I will pass array with one less value that is from 2 to 4 so to pass one less we can say array dot slice of one that means we are passing the array by removing the first element and passing the rest one and I will call the callback again so what will happen in this case it will go one will be passed inside this and callback is of one is true we will immediately return true so this is true but what happened in this case we will pass two in the first case and we will process the callback it is false so we will call the sum recursive again with only the four and we will check with the callback with the four value and it is false then it will call this recursive again with the empty array okay so we need to fix the base case so that when it becomes empty we need to take care of that but in both the cases we are not getting true and so the result will come as false so now only thing we need to take care of one case where array is empty and we have not found the true before that so here I will check if array dot length is equal to equal to zero then it can false so only case when we have empty array then we return false otherwise we use the callback or we will call the recursive again so let's see if it is working and then you can write it so this is true if I pass this this is false if I pass this this is true because 2 and 1 is false 1 is true so we are getting true okay so write down this in 2 minutes if your solution is not as my solution
Okay, so if you're done, we'll move to another one. So let's take the another one, 12 number. So this is the flatten of the array. So if we have one, two, three, and another array, so we will flatten the array by calling this function. So let's write down this function. So this function also we will do like we did object that will use a for loop and if it is array then we will call the flatten again otherwise otherwise we will go one two three uh, as it is okay so let's do I will create a I will create a variable which I will return in the end new array it is empty array and I will go through this array list one by one I say let ball of array. So this ball will be the each value. So when I say wall, wall means it will be one, two, three, each value will be wall. And here I will check if it is this array, then we have to call this flatten again. Okay. But if it is not an array, else in the else case it is not array like this one two and three we have to push one two three in this new array and return that so this new array will be returned and we will push the value in the new array if it is not an array if it is numeric or string is fine so what i'm doing i'm pushing this value if it is not array and I'm pushing one inside this, two inside this, three inside this. But if once we get four, five, we cannot push it inside this new array because otherwise it will be same. We are not flattening it. So here I will check. Here I will check if this value is array or not. So how do you check if this is array or not? So if value is array, how will you check it? Can anyone tell me how to check? the array if it is array or not okay so generally if you pass string also then it has length of greater than one if you pass numeric one then it does not have length kind of thing so to check using the length is not the right way so we have to use this uh, inbuilt function of array so array is an inbuilt object it has a function called as is array and we will pass this value so if if this is array then this will be give me true and if it is not array then it will give me the false so to check the array we use this statement so if this is true, that means this is the array, and if this is the array, then we have to we have to say okay. We'll use the let one because here I will overwrite it one. So what I will do here, I will say new array is equal to. So what we will do? Uh, let's see one function of the array. So let's see what this function does. So if I have this array ABC and then array 2 DEF and I call array 1 that is ABC concatenate array 2 then what it will do it will take ABC and it will take DEF so it will take this one and then this one so it merges both the array. So what I have to do if if I have some value as 4 5 then I will call this new array dot concatenate and here inside it I need to call this 4 5 this part of array right so we need to call the 4 5 inside it so for that we need to call this function flatten again because it will take this value and it will return the new array because it can be array inside array also so we need to 
we we can process this value also if it is only one level if it is one level but we don't know it may be inside another array inside another array so we need to call this flatten function again by passing this value so once I pass 4 5 it will give me 4 5 here and that I will concatenate with the 1 2 3 so it will become 1 2 3 4 5 and why we are calling this flatten LA we could have called wall directly but you know there can be multiple inbuilt level so that may not work with that. Let's try this one. So we are getting one, two, three, four, five. Let's try to change it to let's do a little experiment. If I only put wall, because in this case we know it's one level only. Then also we are getting one, two, three, four. But let's try to change this flattened one to multiple array. Let's say six, seven, eight. Okay, so I think uh, I got some. Say one, one, three. Yeah, we need to we need to have one more rectangular. Okay, so we close this one. So here you will see, till four or five we are getting same, but last one we are getting array because I did concatenate only value. But if I try to take this one. and call call flatten with uh, another array inside it like six seven eight so then you will see we get one two three four five six seven eight so if i was passing only value it would have done only four five one level is fine but if we have multiple levels then we need to call the flatten so that's the reason we will do it for everything. We will call this flatten rather than value. So what it does, it takes the first array, one, two, three, and it takes the flatten one. Flatten one is four, five, and merge. But if we have another one, it passes again in the flatten one, and it merges with the original one. So this we are calling recursively using this line of the statement. So if your solution is not like mine, you can write down this one. Okay, so this is the example. You, I'll give you two minutes to write it down.
Okay, let's do another one. Let's go to 12 is done, 13. Let's go to 13. Okay, so this is the capitalized first and it is similar to this capitalized word. So let me copy this one and then we will let's copy this one and we will edit it a little bit to make it worse. So here we need to capitalize only the first one like <coughs> car, taco and banana. Okay, so the only thing is we need to, here we were changing the whole word to uppercase, but now we have to change only the first letter to uppercase. So let's create a variable where I will only make a first letter as a capital one and others are small. So it's a constant value equal to. value equal to error list 0, I will take 0, 1. First I will slice it to take only the first character. So I will say dot slice 0 to 1. So I am only slicing the first character and converting into uppercase. So what I'm doing, I'm taking this array list zero, that is the car, slicing the first letter. So first letter is zero to one, that is the first letter, converting into uppercase, and then I'll concatenate it with array list zero dot slice of one. When I say slice of one, it will take all of the rest of the characters. So only the first character will be to the uppercase, rest all characters will be as it is, whatever it is. And instead of putting this, I will push wall inside the result. And rest everything will remain same. So let's try to run it and see. So here you see, I am only capitalizing the first character, T, T, B. Rest all others are same. Okay, so write down this one, copy from the words one and copy it here and just change this line of statement. You have two minutes to finish this.
Okay, let's go to the next one. We are done with the 14, we are done with the 15. Let's do 16 number problem, stringy five numbers. So this is a similar to what we did here. Where is that problem? Yeah, so we did this kind of thing, nested even sum. So this is the idea which we will use again in this problem. So we have to stringify the number, that is, if number is 1, we have to convert it into the string. But if it is already a string or boolean, we will keep it same at it, as it is. will not change it. So that's what uh, we have to do. So what we will do, we will create a new object, constant new object. And I will return this new object in the end. Now I will loop through this object, which is this current object which I am sending it, and we will uh, we will call recursively this function if required. Otherwise, we will convert number to a string and keep boolean as it is. So let's loop through this object for let key in object. I will check if type of if type of this one is type of object of key is equal to equal to first I will take it if it is object if it object then I have to call the stringify number again so I will write down that code in a minute then I will check if type of type of object of key is equal to equal to number if it is number then I have to stringify it so the task is if it is number then stringify it so here I will say new object of key I will put I will stringify it and I will put it in the new object so new object of this key is equal to Object of key that is one, whatever one we are sending dot to a string. So if it is number like this, one is number, then I will convert it into the string using this function and assign it to assign it to this new object. So new object of num will become string of one. That is string of one. And if it is neither number nor object, that is it may be boolean or array or anything, then I will keep it same. So I will say new object key is equal to object of key. So I will keep it same. I will not touch that thing. And if it is object, then we will call this function again as it is. So if it is object, I will call this new object of key is equal to stringify numbers and I will call this with the new value okay so if it is object like this then I will call this function again with only this part of the value so I'm calling stringify with the value which I am getting it so if it is object we call this function again and it will do the same thing and if it is numeric we convert it to the string if it is other than numeric or object that is it is string or boolean we will call it as it is let's run this and see how it goes okay so if I'm running this you will see num is now a string in the data value is string in the info, random is string. Rest others are as it is. We are not changing anything to others. So only thing is I am getting this test as test as an object which, which is wrong, right? Test is going as object. It should go as an array. Okay, so the reason is the reason is this array is also considered as an object. 
so it is converting into the this one. So we can also use our old dish logic which we did here. You know, we, we can use this one, but to check if it is array, then we can write additional logic here. But I, I'm not really interested in doing it now because our main purpose was to convert numeric to in string. I know this test is breaking because this array is also considered as an object. And so, so we will not do any array conversion now. Okay, so let's forget about array now. We are taking numeric or string in this case. I don't want to complicate this logic now. We just write down this function in two minutes. Okay, so let's go to the, our last problem of the day, the collect strings. Okay, so what, what does the collect string do? So collect strings will go through this object and we will take all the string into the array. So it will be the similar the logic which we used in the 16. We'll be using same idea and do it because it is object and we go inside the object. Whenever we have object, we have to go inside the object, we will use this same technique which we see it here. Okay, so let's do the same technique here. So I'll create one variable called as results, which will be the array which will return it because it is expecting array in the end. So we'll take the array and result it, return it. And then I'll go through the object list let key in object and then I will check if type of object of key is equal to equal to object so if we have something as object 
then we will call this recursively this function again. Okay, so I will write down this in a minute, this part. Let's do the another one. Else if type of object of key is equal to equal to string. If it is string, then we have to put it in the array. So what we will do, results dot push object of key because we have to take only the string one. So if it is string, then only we will push it in the results. But if it is object, then we have to call this function again. And we have to pass this object of key. Okay, and what will happen when we get uh, some result back? There is some results back here. So let's consider we are getting in the R variable. So it will be nothing but if I pass this object, and then it will go down, go down, and it will send me this as an array in the array, or this in the array. So R will be the array of some strings. So we have to take this array, we have to take this array, and we have to push it in the results. So how to do that? So I'll check if r dot length is greater than zero. That means we got something in the array because many times the array will be empty. We don't need to take that one. So if if length is greater than zero, then what we do? We push in the results. Results dot push, and we have to do dot 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 r. Okay, so when I say dot 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 r, that means array which is coming from here, it will be, it will be, you know, flattened and put it in the results one. Okay, we can also do the concatenate part which we learned before, like this concat, and then we can do r. Okay, this is another way to do it, and the new way we can also do using this way. We just start push and we can take all R and push it inside it. So what will happen when a stuff is coming, it will be in the results, it will be foo, but then data is coming as an object. So data will be passed here in the collect string again. So then this part will go again in the collect string. Since this is object, then this part will again go in the uh, in this collect string. And since this is object, this part will again go in the strings. And th this one is the string. So it will return, the results of the, the bar will be returned as an array, which will be pushed to the main results. And then we go to this uh, another object, another object, and then we get a string again. So that string will be pushed again inside this results one. Okay, so we have only if and else if condition. And let's run it again now. So let's run it and see it is how it works. So we are getting foo, bar, and pass. So this is the idea. Every time you have to loop through the object and go inside and do some manipulation, you have to use this logic. Manipulation is done in this else if condition. But otherwise, if it is object, then we will go recursively. If you write down this function in two minutes.
Okay, that's all for today. Any questions?